Okay, let's get the latest update on the Jamal Khashoggi situation, fiasco, call it whatever you want. The backstory, of course, is that after uh, Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi disappeared and was killed, we first heard from the president of the United States that it could have been anyone. It could have been rogue killers. We then saw as the information continued to build that, in fact, Saudi Arabia was aware of what was going on with Khashoggi, may have been involved in the planning of what was going on with Khashoggi, may have ordered the killing of Khashoggi. Donald Trump insisted on siding with Saudi Arabia rather than with basically every other country and our own intelligence agencies. He wouldn't accept the findings of the CIA. He wouldn't listen to the recording of the killing of Shamal Khashoggi because it's a suffering tape, as he called it. And so he's continued to sort of play coy with it, despite the pretty obviously building evidence more and more that Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud was uh, directly involved. We now have another level of information, and I alluded to it yesterday talking about Lindsey Graham, although I didn't get a chance to dig into it, which is that the CIA has information suggesting that 11 times Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman was personally in touch with the murder team, the group of people, 15 people who killed Shamal Khashoggi, Khashoggi before and after the killing at that Saudi consulate in Istanbul, Turkey. This is a CIA assessment that was obtained by The Wall Street Journal. Mohammed bin Salman was communicating with Saud al Qatani, who was supervising the obviously if you have 15 people in a killing team, you need a supervisor. And Saud al Qatani was supervising that team. And Mohammed bin Salman, according to the CIA, was directly in touch with him. The CIA also has, as part of this assessment that uh, Mohammed bin Salman is responsible, communication between Mohammed bin Salman and associates back in August of 2017 about how they might be able to, quote, trap Khashoggi. And it was specifically mentioned that if they couldn't lure Khashoggi to Saudi Arabia, quote, we could possibly lure him outside Saudi Arabia and make arrangements, which is number one, exactly what happened. Khashoggi ended up ultimately being killed at the Saudi embassy in Istanbul, Turkey, a different country. Uh, it lines up with the reporting that Khashoggi became a target um, much earlier than initial reports suggested, actually becoming a target in late 2016 when he criticized both the favorable to the Saudis and favorable to Trump perspective on Iran, and that that is what initially put him on people's radar. And if Mohammed bin Salman is talking about Shamal, Jamal Khashoggi back in August of 2017, that also supports that hypothesis. So Republican senators were briefed the day before yesterday by G, uh, CIA director Gina Haspel. They came away basically with the conclusion that, yeah, Shamal Khashoggi ordered the murder. And Republicans now are saying some of them that there's no question about it. Senator Bob Corker, who's a Republican, said, quote, I have zero question in my mind that the crown prince ordered the killing, monitored the killing, knew exactly what was happening, planned it in advance. If he was in front of a jury, he would be convicted in 20, in 30 minutes guilty. Corker says that Donald Trump's position on this issue is, quote, unacceptable. Lindsey Graham, I already told you, says that there's not a smoking gun, there's a smoking saw, and that you have to be willfully blind not to come to the conclusion that this was organized and orchestrated by people under the command of Mohammed bin Salman. So, Pat, this is what the Magnitsky Act is for, to sanction foreign government officials and individuals implicated in human rights abuses anywhere in the world. There are countless ways that this could be used against the Saudis, and I would like to see it done. I'm not holding my breath for Trump to do it, though. No, absolutely not. And of course, Trump is to the bitter end going to stick to this idea that it could have been rogue killers or it could have been a 400 pound man on a bed somewhere. I mean, if you're going to suggest that you got to provide some evidence. And the problem is that we have, you know, dozens of pieces of evidence to suggest that Khashoggi, uh, that um, Mohammed bin Salman was behind the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. And there's nothing really to the contrary.
people who are unsure about how we would use the Magnitsky Act against Saudis maybe don't know exactly how it works. The Magnitsky list uh, individuals, people put on the Magnitsky list are personally sanctioned. OK, that means they can't come to the United States. They can't do business with American banking institutions. This would really hurt some of these rich Saudis financially and uh, financially. And it would also allow the United States to freeze the assets that some of these Saudis have in the United States. That could include assets that were run through. I don't know, real estate transactions involving Oh, maybe the current president of the United States, Donald Trump and some of his companies. So you don't have to look very far. I think the point is to figure out personal impetus for Donald Trump not to take this seriously. And that's exactly what he's doing. Make sure that you're following the show on Instagram at David Pakman show. Follow me on Instagram while you're there at David dot Pakman behind the scenes pictures of the studio of the Pat cave of the whole thing. We'll take a quick break and be back after this. One of today's sponsors is Skillshare, which is an amazing online learning community that offers thousands of high quality classes on almost any topic. The first 500 people who click the link under this video will get two entire months of totally free access to every single class offered by Skillshare. They've got classes on everything from design, video editing, photography, business, technology, cooking, meditation even classes on personal productivity. I know you'll be able to find something on Skillshare that fascinates you or even something that will help you in your everyday life. Classes are taught by real people who care about what they're teaching. I just took a really great class on more advanced video editing techniques. The David Pakman show is giving you two months of free access to every class they offer. When you click the link under this video, Think about everything you'll have at your fingertips for two whole months, totally free, hard to beat. And after that, if you like it, you can keep access to every class on Skillshare for under 10 bucks a month. One of the most affordable learning platforms out there. Just click the link under this video to redeem your two free months of Skillshare. But hurry, it's only available to the first 500 who sign up. 